G'day listeners, and welcome back to the Keep League Podcast. We're the AFL Fantasy Podcast that doesn't talk about the superstars. We only talk about lesser knowns and the players who are going to bring value to your draft and Keep League teams. I'm a very deflated Hef, and joining me on the podcast tonight is Jordy DeSena. How are you, mate? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, he sent a bit deflated, which is not good. Um, keen to talk footy anyway. Um, obviously, yeah, been a bit of a long year, but uh, yeah, uh, not good that you sound a bit deflated. Yeah, I'll run the listeners through what happened. I did put a tweet out today for those that uh, are off the uh, the Elon Twitter sphere, uh, the X space. Um, yeah, I lost the Keeper League grand final by, I think it was 32 points in the end. I think I got given a handball or a kick late on after the score adjustments, but yeah. Uh, yeah, very, very rough weekend. Um, capped off by losing Brent Daniels on the Sunday morning and copping a donut and losing by 30-odd points. That's just, yeah, devastating. Yeah, to cop a donut, like you need, I think we are saying before, we need you need the rolling lockout, I oh, think. And 100%. that, that, that would have won you the yeah. game. We uh, famously, Kays is our commissioner, like new commissioner over the last two years and got rid of the rolling lockout and brought in a full lockout of the weekend. Actually, it's first Saturday lockout, which was also, I also hate. I don't want to hate on the fucking league too much, but like, yeah. I also hate like um, the uneven of loopholes in a, in a grand final. Like he had three Collingwood players and I had like none. Yeah, so and you can't like, do anything. <laughs> yeah, it's like that sort of stuff as well. But like, again, 35 points, donut. And like, I'm not going to say I got super unlucky because he also had Liam Duggan that scored like 28 and Lockie Weller that did stuff all as well. And then I think they had Lob in his forward line that got a 50-odd and even um, uh, what's the key defender from... Um, St. Kilda, that's pretty easy. Uh, Jack. No, no, what was Battle or no? Josh uh, Battle. So, yeah. yeah. Josh Battle, um, who scored like 50 odd as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it's like there's lots of things that went my way in that final as well. But, mm-hmm. like, it was just a weekend as well where, like, there wasn't very many good matchups for fantasy. Don't, fantasy, don't you agree? I agree. And, uh, yeah, we, yeah, that's the thing. Hey, like, it's just depending on the matchups and. You got to get a bit lucky in the game. Yeah, you exactly. Know? And like the luck, week yeah. before, you went like what eighteen fifty or something. Yeah, and my biggest so, score for the season. Yeah, and yeah, and I like, stormed into a grand some final. leagues. You know, they play that the week before. I'm always used to playing the last one because I want to want to play yeah, yeah. every round. Yeah, of course. But um, you can see why some leagues sort of just think that. You know, I guess there wasn't too many players being rested and all yeah, that yeah. this, this no, week anyway. So it's not yeah, just exactly. got super super, super unlucky. unlucky, and uh, it is what it is. But uh, anyway. Um, we'll make my league great again and we'll re- reinstate the uh, rolling lockout. I think a new commission is going to come to play in our league, but there'll be more on that uh, in uh, next season's podcast. But anyway, um, we'll get into the show. Uh, we do have to do the uh, the wheel to spin for the final time of the season. Forgot to actually get it up before we started. So let's spin the wheel. Thanks to Game Day Squad. Once again, thanks heaps to Game Day Squad uh, for looking after the show this year and uh, yeah, helping support it and allowing us to do a lot of things like live shows and stuff like that, which has been pretty cool with their support. So uh, hats off to them. And uh, yeah, we'll spin the wheel now to see who the final winner of the 2024 season is. And congratulations to... The Laddams. <laughs> so, yeah, big fan of Pete Laddams there. Well done, the Laddams. Uh, yeah, if you're listening to this still, uh, get in touch with me on the DMs on any of the socials and I'll send you the pack code. Um, while we're on the topic of Gando Squad as well, we do have a well, kind of kind of linked. We do have a survey um, out at the moment. Um, it's more so for us uh, to get some feedback on the show, what we can improve on, what we can build on, what we can do better. Um, what you're enjoying and what we should do more of, all that sort of stuff. Um, there is a few questions about Game Day Squad in there as well, which they'd greatly appreciate some feedback on their platform as well. So, um, yeah, if you're uh, able to do that uh, survey, there's a link in the description below. I think every member and anyone who's ever been a member got emailed a link today. It's all on the socials as well, so you'll be able to find it. But, yeah, please uh, help us out, do that survey so we can uh, improve the show for next season. Anyways, let's get on to the round review. Let's get this over and done with tonight. Uh, <laughs> Melbourne versus Collingwood. We're only going to talk about this week, I reckon, just the guys we haven't really spoken about much this season. If we've talked about them at length, they're pretty well known. But um, And then after the round rewind, we'll uh, get into some a few extra things like some uh, watch list players and some um, yeah other, other bits and pieces. So Ed Allen for the Collingwood uh, Magpies on Friday night. It was just great to see him get a game as an inside midfielder. Mm. So this is as, as a junior, he played this role. 
Um, but in the VFL, he's been playing on the, on a wing a lot more, and then the AFL as well. So it's mm. great to see him come on. Um, second most CBAs behind uh, Steel Sidebottom, apart from the Ruckman, Darcy Cameron, of course. But uh, yeah, what'd you make of his game? Yeah, I think it's uh, great to see, as you said. I think he's a fairly high draft pick, been on the list a couple of years now. Um, and I think you know, out of sort of all the teams that are you know pretty pretty good like obviously Collingwood around the mark there they probably do like a little bit of midfield depth you know you probably got Dacos and Dago as your number one and two and then they're sort of rolling the Pendlebury inside bottom and you know these are older guys through there so thinking about the next wave um who is it going to be could it yeah. be Ed Allen um you know we probably thought Finlay McRae was going to be that guy this year and it, obviously you know he hasn't come along so maybe yeah. Allen's the one there um so yeah good to see and you know to put up 87 uh good to see you can do it at AFL level Went um went hundred plus as a junior in the uh, yep. TAC Cup or whatever it's called now the uh, Coates High League or something like that. Yeah. But uh yeah so um yeah really good to see and just good to see him getting that midfield role there. I hundred percent agree that Collingwood something's going to change about that Collingwood midfield. Yeah. Like you can't keep just going back to Pendlebury. <laughs> like, exactly. Well, sort of you got the two Dacos boys, but Josh plays out in the wing yep. a bit more. You need someone else in there. Exactly. I reckon he could be like the kind of third banana mm. um, in there eventually. So it could be a good one to go with. Um, Will Pay, Will, no, sorry, Will Parker, his 83 points. What do you think of him off the halfback? Yeah, it's hard to hard to see. I think I want to see a little bit more from him. Um, obviously, yeah, just pop this one. Um, just wondering whether it is the tip of the cap or whether he can actually sort of solidify that role down there. Um, obviously, yeah, as you mentioned, you know, Dacos has gone into the middle. So there is, you know, there's points back there. There's someone that's going to sort of take like that a role. Proper attacking yeah. halfback flanker since he's gone in there. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly right. So yeah. I just, I don't know. I just want to see see more like obviously yeah he's what he's a rookie i think he was a category b rookie yeah. so obviously i think he transitioned from cricket so i just want to see a bit more um because yeah i'm not sure he saw the pedigree obviously because he's uh transitioned over so um just, yeah just want to see a bit more and if uh he can do that then yeah potentially could be an option he's definitely in my black book just because there's a role there i think for someone to yeah. take next season so he's could be a potential player there um onto the hawthorne versus north melbourne game cam mckenzie has ended the season exceptionally well um a lot of uh, midfield time, but only average 25% of the season. Is he someone you think keeps four status for, for next year? I think he definitely does. Um, and, yeah, if you got him in a keeper, I'd be 100% keeping him in, you know, if it's a 12 or a 16 or yeah. – um, Obviously, yeah, Will Day was out. So, um, yeah, a little bit more time, I think, there. But um, quality player, so um, – and he's shown good signs. I'm just thinking, like, I wonder what – because I think VFL does factor into posi- position changes. So. Yeah. I know he's 25% at AFL level. He did play a bit of VFL throughout the season. So just wondering if that Depends. tips him up or whatever. Yeah. And if, see how many games he's played um, at AFL level. would have to have a look. So I wonder if that outweighs um, the VFL. Yeah, I've got I – do, I do have him up here. I'll just have a look um, at his numbers because, yeah – it, it does factor in, but he did actually play quite a bit of AFL. He only played. Oh, it's only three three match stretch. I thought it was a lot longer than that. I think it was a sub a few times and stuff yeah. like that as well. So that probably goes in his favour as well. So yeah, that's all right then. Shouldn't be too bad. I think he does keep his forward status. So that's going to be pretty handy for coaches next year because you think he'll make a full time move into the midfield eventually as well. Uh, onto the Geelong West Coast game. Uh, Sean Manor. He's just replicating what he did at VFL level, isn't he? Yeah, hundred percent. And Geelong, they just seem to draft these guys that they know that they need. It's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Fill the role, scoring points, and you know there was one game he got like a hundred points, but he had like fourteen tackles or something. Yeah. And this game he had six tackles, and yeah. he's putting up a one twelve, obviously against West Coast, but they just seem to slot these guys straight in. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Um, yeah, like plays the right role for fantasy. I'm not super happy if I'm like a Brad Close like owner yeah. or like if I'm someone who's relied on him for his kind of 70s that he pops up with type thing because I think he's done I think he's even hindered Grian Myers a tiny bit mm. not heaps but yeah um, I think he's definitely a forward option next week we'll actually talk about a bit of the, the few the depth of forwards and stuff towards the end of this show yeah. so Can it's going to be pretty interesting to look at when you compare some of the players um, onto the West Coast side of things like is there any <laughs> West Coast player that you'd happily draft next season and this, like you're saying, like uh, like a Duggan type, or like it's like a oh, someone so coming Duggan, along. Uh, Duggan probably is fair. Yeah, um, I just he probably just didn't make my notes because he only scored 28 this week. Yes, <laughs> but it's like Duggan's definitely fair. But anyone else on top of that, like, are you thinking Harley Reid? Are you thinking Jake Waterman? Like, would you actually want them? Or you let? Yeah, you happy to let someone else have those guys? Oh, I think I'd want Reid just because of the Reid. He's term. very he's very exciting. Yeah. Um, Do you think yeah, he comes think on next right. year though? Like, oh, yeah. probably probably needs a bit more. 
time. Like I think that, you know, like maybe Brady Hoff, like I, I, I think we talked about him a few weeks ago, whether maybe he could push that 10 point, up or more yeah. average and but again you're right like they're gonna they might take a year or two more yeah. than what you're gonna want it's it's a west like, coast issue more than the players yeah issue you know what i mean like there's just no points being scored like look at this game did I, did anyone go over 100 i don't think they did no nah. and they're gonna get probably go backwards before they go forwards as well yes. so yeah, it's gonna be interesting. the same with like richmond as well we're gonna move on to the next game in a second like especially with the exodus of players that are going in there i feel really i feel really troubled like for richmond because like at least like when some of these other teams have bottomed out, like you've had a few like real senior heads stick around and mm. help them out. Like, you know, at um, North Melbourne, at least they had like a Z-Wolf for quite some time. Goldie. And yeah. Left, and then yeah. LDU still it was like a, had kind of broken out by the time like the mm. real kind of low had come around type thing. Um, and then there's some like genuine like guns that have come to like, Sheezer was like just an amazing, not just an amazing player, just like an amazing person and leader type thing as well. Like Richmond really need to hit a lot of things to be kind of, safe in the yep. future um i think they're doing it at the right time because like with tasmania around the corner and all that sort of thing but like again once those guys it's only gonna get way worse next season there's they're not gonna have the ball a lot in their hands a lot like they're a team i'm probably avoiding a bit as well yes i think you're spot on and um yeah i think you're right and i think they're gonna they're, they're trialing like four or five guys in their vfl side at the moment i think they're gonna look at trying drafting these guys together yep. but you know, I'm a Taranto owner in a keeper. Yeah. And he's, a, you know, he's top end talent. And, you know, he went at 95 this year. Yes, a few injuries. But yeah. I'm not sure even Taranto can maybe, if Richmond are down the bottom, like, is he going to be that 110 guy? Yeah. Again, like, and, and you, I bet you, I guess you really only got Hopper and Taranto. I feel there. they're okay because they're at the source. Yeah. But, like, if you're like a Jaden Short owner, like, the stocks are plummeting there type he's thing. He's taking a big back step. Hey? Yeah, and there's just there's going to be no one else there. Like, And you want to get on some of these draftees, like a Kane McAuliffe, who you know has a, has a good underage scorer. But, like, they are not going to get the help that they need. <laughs> like, nah. Yeah, it's just not going to happen for a few of them. Like, I don't mind the two big, the two main mids. Yeah. but Because they're at the source and they can get tackles. And, like, and, Nankovis as well might yeah, be a solid, yeah, you know, yeah. he's like the sort of captain. Um, but the guys on the peripherals, they just kind of battle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in this game, uh, Will Graham, I didn't really see too much of this one. Um, I, I'm not sure if I'd cracked the shits yet on this one. No, I hadn't <laughs> quite yet. I think I had for the first time and gotten over it. So, um, but yeah, I went down to the park and kicked the soccer ball with my son. So, uh, yeah, what happened with Will Graham? Uh, yeah, I didn't catch heaps of it either, but 93 points. Um, and, you know, he's been playing a bit of a midfield role, you know, here and there um, as, you know, I, I sort of was looking at that and he actually had zero CBA. So to score 93 and he, kicked a couple goals um like that's pretty good coming off like half forward you know yeah. for a young player so yeah one to watch there obviously um one of the academy players so obviously you know high talent there but uh yeah i just to mention like that's one of the hardest roles to play that 100%. sort of forward role and to yeah. get 93 points is like no cba so that's pretty good effort yeah 100 so, percent. no he's yeah. been a super handy pickup for a lot of our teams yeah i think I ended up with him in super coach at the end like i couldn't get him get rid of him yeah um but i couldn't get him into my defense either at the end, which would have been so handy, like for the Sheezel out and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, anyway, I know. It wasn't to be. Yeah. Um, onto the Brisbane versus Essendon game. Like this game as well, so frustrating. You think Danaher in his 200th game would kick a bag, like at least, and get more than 50 odd points or whatever. Oh, you needed that too. He did have, um, <laughs> he did have, uh, yeah, he's, he's in my team for the listeners out there. He did have um, two arm chop free kicks right in front of goal that just weren't called and that yeah. was so blatant. And um, got one goal to overturn because he hit the post. <laughs> so, like, just a few just bits and pieces day. that, yeah, that would have just got me over the line if a few other things went his way. Um, Dyson Heppel, though, I think every year we go on about the retirement game. I think Jack yeah. Zebel was a big one last year after not um, after not playing, I think, the few rounds prior. Yeah. Like, pretty similar situation. Yeah. And so really? like, I had her in last year and um, he was out like for the couple of weeks and then he put up a 90 in the yeah. last game and I just held him for that reason, you yeah. know. Um, and Heppel, he was on the waivers in pretty much all the leagues I could see. Obviously, we didn't know if he was getting names, but, you know, the coaches out there who potentially saw that and picked it, yeah. it just shows that retirement games, you usually score pretty well. It's for like leagues like ours where we don't do waivers all season type yeah. thing. Like you pick these guys up so late in the draft because no one wants a 30 plus year old that's on the cusp of like, yeah. not even playing, you know what I mean but you pick up like a club champ you know that's gonna retire at the end of the year and like I guess I'm just trying to th rack my brain of who might retire next year like I don't know maybe someone like Luke Parker well, he's not that old but yeah I think you hopefully get a little deal um, yeah but 
Pendlebury, Sidebottom. Um, yeah, those types. Yeah. Uh, Tom Mitchell, maybe. Tom Mitchell. Yeah. Um, Tex Walker. I think he's going to be one more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those kind back. of guys. I don't know. Yeah, no, um, 100%. Like, yeah. They'll, get, they'll get a farewell game probably at the end of the season, especially if like they're out of finals and stuff like that. Yeah. And they can go massive, so they're worth owning just for that. Like, I would have loved to have uh, streamed someone like that. Dangerfield? Oh, he's probably got a couple more. Yeah, I was just, yeah, only because he's a champ. But yeah, yeah his probably, body's <laughs> probably getting there. But anyway, um, Brisbane versus Essendon. So, yeah, we talked about Heppel. Uh, Archie Roberts did it again. What's, his, what's your take on this guy? Well, I thought he was a bit like too small. Like that was what a lot of people were saying, and that's why he slid down in the draft. But and he's actually, very outside. Like yeah, he's an outside. Type. Yeah, but he's putting up like scores back to back to back. So yeah. that's like awesome. And um, I know he was supposed to be like I was reading the Phantom Guide last year, Cal Toomey's, and he was supposed to be a top thirty pick, but he slid. So I don't know why. Yeah, he was that. Whether it was his size, um, but to put that up is pretty good. Yeah, they'd be super happy with it. Like you could see probably. Him slotting into, well, he has slotted into Heffel's role. It's probably yeah. the reason why he stayed out the last few weeks as well. So, yeah, he's um he's one there that is going to be around for a while. And I think that's one of the glimmering pieces of, you know, glimmering shining lights um, mm. for Essendon fans. You've got people like Archie Roberts coming through on that uh, halfback flank and can push up to the wing as well. Um, and then Nick Bryan, 81 points. It's going to be an interesting space for Essendon Rucks. You'd, you'd think Goldstein's, Goldstein's pretty much done. Yeah. I think he's got one more year left on his deal, though, I think. Not sure, yeah. Might be there just for break glass in case of emergency. Plus, he's yeah. probably the perfect guy to train with, like, for rucking as yeah, well. So, true. he does offer a fair bit to Essendon. But, uh, yeah, Nick Bryan with 81 points. Like, at the start of the season, like, we, everyone, well, all of us that were doing our rankings had him, you know, around the mark um, mm. because it was just more so, like, where does he fit in the pecking order? But I think this is the season he needed to kind of show that he can do something, don't you reckon? I like him. I think he's good. And uh, Draper as well. Like, if see what, how that mix works. They but still seem to score okay together, yeah, those two. Yeah, so. so I like him. I think... Uh, yeah, like how long has he been on the list? Probably a couple of years now. He's probably Three ready. Or four, yeah, yeah, and that obviously takes the rucks a bit of time. So I think he's got some good signs. Yeah, look for that one in the future. Um, On to the Sydney versus Adelaide, Adelaide game. Just another shit matchup for my Jordan Dawson <laughs> player here. Just uh, You just knew he was going to be shit. But anyway, um, Luke Parker, is he getting forward status next year, you reckon? Yeah, he is, I reckon, as long as he keeps this role. So like champion data do include finals. That's, yeah. I saw they tweet that a few years ago. Yeah. So, uh, But at the moment, yeah, 100%. Is, and he's actually playing that role pretty well. Like he kicked three goals, kicked three goals last week as well. Yeah. Like he's actually finding it. Um. And yeah, he's listed as a midfield midfielder forward on uh, yeah. their player position. So yeah, on the champion data categorization, yeah, so that's yeah. going to be real handy. And he's still like that, um, like what do you call it? That uh, X factor, the circuit breaker to go in the midfield when they need a bit of yep. thing going as well. Like so, he's definitely still going to play that role. Is there a chance he leaves Sydney at some stage? There was talk of that. There is, yeah. And I think you know, mid Sydney's midfield is just so tight now. And um, yeah, I just I wonder what what happens with that so if he leaves and wants to play midfield like oh he'd, he'd be one of the biggest locks like you know in all the formats next year like would i don't i don't know what's been thrown out there but like someone like north melbourne would take oh, him in a heartbeat 100 like, percent. even clarko's like mentioned it like obviously yeah. he mentioned viney yeah and then viney signed a four-year deal yeah yeah and like parker i don't know whether I th I've, maybe he thinks parker he actually really does want Parker, but yeah. he's not saying it. But I think they did say that they're looking for experienced heads yeah. in that in that midfield. So Imagine um, him having four yeah. status, status and being at North Melbourne, like in that midfield. you got to keep him. Yeah. You've, you're our owner, are you? Yeah, I'm yeah. owner. I'm, I'm going to go through like the, the forwards we got listed later on. I yeah. own like four of them. Yeah, we could. <laughs> and then you got rolling lockout now. Yeah. That's your year next year. <laughs> <laughs> have to wait see. But uh, yeah, uh, Billy Dowling, well, speaking of forward status, his forward status is probably in danger, wouldn't you say? It is. I mean, I'm a Dowling owner and I think he's going to be mid only. He's playing, uh, yeah. You know, he's playing on the wing. wing like yeah. he's I'm seeing him, Shoal and um Nank well, on the wing it was Nank of us, sort yeah. of just rotating there. So but you know, he just seems to pop up like he's one of those guys you don't even like really notice and then all of a sudden like he, he eighty three points and he just pops up yeah. for marks. He just he's just a natural scorer. Like yeah. he's just always like, you know, Either coming out of defense or going inside forward 50. If they're not going long, he's kind of like always in the middle exactly. in between it to receive it. So, yeah, um, it's 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 good for him. But, like, it just sucks that you didn't really get to capitalize on his forward status this yeah. year that much. Um, it would have been good if you so, played in your grand final or whatever. But. Yeah. In our league, we have a rookie rule of under 15 games. Yeah. So he's played, I think, 10 games or something. Yeah. So he's able to be rookied. So yeah. that's really handy because... 
know, like I'm going to keep him as a rookie. Yeah. And I can use that maybe as an M7 potentially yeah. Yeah. next year. Yeah. Um, nice. But uh, yeah, I mean, if depending on how many you keep and all that, like he's probably, a, you know, a year or two off and whether he does ever get inside time. So, yeah, that's yeah. it. And, that, and it could happen with the Crows. Mm. Like, I don't know. You look at that list and there's talk of um, talk of Matthew Nix being sacked and all that sort of stuff. But like you look at that list and one of my mates pointed out like the last 10 years of their drafting has been atrocious. Oh. Like you cannot expect anything from that list at the moment. Exactly. And if they're going to go anywhere, he's someone that probably could step up and they could try something different in there. So be interesting to see. Um, Western Bulldogs versus GWS Giants. Uh, yeah, I definitely cracked the shits by now um, with this game start after Brent, the news of Brent Daniels. Yeah. But a few good takeaways. The main ones are just Caleb Daniel and Jack McRae. Like they're going to be forwards next year. Are they going to be at the club? Like even even in this game though, this is the thing, and the finals are gonna be super interesting. It just felt like they needed these experienced heads yeah. in this game, and they stood up for them mm. in this game. Like I think they're gonna be crazy not to play them in finals, and then hopefully that just means either they're pushed back up the pecking order for next season, or their draft capital goes up and get a game somewhere else next year. Don't you reckon? Yes, hundred yeah. percent. I think, yeah, I think it would be good if they're traded fantasy wise. Yeah, I think. Um, but yeah, you're spot on. Yeah, hopefully something happens for either of them because they're too good to be playing in the twos and they're yeah. too good at scorers in fantasy to be you know away on our benches not doing anything. Uh, I just want to give a shout-out to my boy uh, Harvey Gallagher with 79 points. Got a little bit of inside time again. And uh, Bailey Smith uh, probably leaving at the end of the year. That might yeah. leave a little bit of a hole for him to slot it, into, although Ed Rich has just kind of gone in and done there. But it's not going to take long for someone like Trelaw to start sliding. I yep. think. And Bont's not as old, but they're kind of yeah. getting... Well, Trelaw's like bit. 32, you yeah. know, and how long... How long has he got? Yeah, and Liber, like, sorry, as well. is Liber, pretty, yeah. like, kind of... On the, he's 32 as well, I think. Yeah. So those two are probably going to start declining pretty soon. So it's time for someone like Gallagher to step in and take over alongside Ed Richards as well. Uh, the Carlton versus St. Kilda game was an absolute crack. Did you watch it? Oh, you were oh, playing. I was at the Palais, but I had yeah. the TV there. Yeah. And it, everyone was glued to it. And you should have heard the Palais when Saints kicked the goal. Yeah. Everyone was just like... So you're just singing over the top of people cheering. Pretty, yes, I was. <laughs> and it was, and I was looking, I was like, yeah, it was just crazy. Could have just stopped. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm fully mine still get paid. Oh, Perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it was great. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, the only one really the interesting out of this game was uh, Cooper Lord, um, 88 points. Uh, inside type, do you think he's one worth looking at or do you think the midfield's too deep? This Carlton? is, yeah, this is one I haven't really had a heap of a look on. Obviously, um, was playing there. But yeah, Carlton midfield is is deep. And uh, they were running like um, uh, Carroll through there at the start of the year and he's obviously, you know, been out and they've got Hollands in there. So I, I'm, it's hard to read on, on Cooper Lloyd. I need to see a bit more. Um, is it Was he like a like draft, like... Where did he come from? That's I've just never really heard of him. Yeah, um, I don't think I'll, I'll check his um because he obviously wasn't a high draft. Yeah, pick. I don't I don't know to be honest. Yeah. Um, I did look this up today, but I'm not sure if he was drafted last year or not. No, it doesn't look like it. I don't think so. It must have been the year before. Maybe he was even rookie listed. Or he could yeah rookie. Yeah, so I'm not sure, but he wasn't the main. Did, I didn't do a write up on him. So yeah. Um, I don't, and that's I don't the really thing. Know. I think he's just sort of come in, and even when he got named, I was like, oh, who's this like Cooper Lord? And then yeah. you know, put him in the inside time. So. Yeah, I mean, it's promising, it's but promising. it's just a deep midfield. Yeah, it's probably not going to last very long, but maybe maybe one for you know to stash away for a couple of years. Um, and on the Fremantle versus Port Adelaide game, the only one in here, this one was Nathan O'Driscoll. Like I thought he looked okay last week when he came off on the mm. sub, and he actually played inside time last week. Mm. Played on the wing, pretty much on Burgoyne, so two kind of young midfielder mm. wingers going at it, and they both scored pretty well but no he's um he's always had potential as a scorer he looked great when he started i just have i don't know why he's has he been injured, injured. or yeah, yeah. Heaps okay injuries, well yeah. that's fair because like yeah. i was gonna say if he's been out of the side he's i feel like he's you know he adds a bit to that team um, yeah. on, the, on the wing so i think he essentially missed like a whole year through injury like half of a season and came back and then got injured again so it was like, like yeah another, like six months type thing so yeah a lot of injuries that's happened in but he's definitely one that uh We've kind of seen signs of like signs of brilliance yeah. from him in the past. Um, does some crazy things. The role is probably not ideal as a winger, but yeah. he can't show he can go inside as well. But I think he's probably best suited to the outside. That's all. But could be a good M seven for you at some stage. Yeah. Um, On to the so that's the end of the round rewind. So you want to talk through a few potential um, DPPs that I you do. Think might get for next season. So what do you got? Yeah. So I just, yeah, I've been planning it. I didn't make the keeper league grand final. So I was sort of, you know, enjoying watching it, but also thinking about next year and what my team could look like. Yeah. Um, but 
Callum obviously worked uh, watching the game Saturday night. Uh, Callum Mills, um, he played 100% defense the last two weeks now. Um, and he scored 170. He just looks heaps more settled there, I think. He was just sort of running everywhere on yeah. that wing. And I just think, obviously, he's only played six games. But champion data straight after the game, I think I texted you, but they've updated him to medium defender now. Yeah. So he's right now he's ticked over enough to get defender status. Yeah. Um, and yeah. obviously, yeah, champion data do count their finals. Yeah. So if he keeps this role, I think he's going to be defender, which I think is awesome because, um, yeah, I just, I just worry about him as a – you know, I don't think he can be that one ten guy anymore. And they don't need him in the midfield. And exactly. McInerney's going to come back in next week, or exactly. Week after, so they just don't need him there. You know, when he was going one ten, Goulden and he and Warner and these guys weren't like they weren't established yet. They were just like rookies or first year players. So I think if he can be a defender and be eighty eighty five, like you're going to keep yeah. keep him. And he's great. Like I personally love to watch him. Oh, play. Yeah, hundred percent. So, you're keeping him. The thing is, as well, like you've got Matt Roberts back there. Yes, the lizard. You've got Mills. Jake Lloyd is officially over. <laughs> so <laughs> once oh, and for all, <laughs> he played wing. He, I wonder what he, what did he get? Because I don't think he got a big eight. one at all. He got eighty. Eighty. Yeah. So oh, he geez. had like I think an eight point first quarter or something like that. He didn't touch it until yeah. the last like minute of the first quarter. Or something he got a cheeky like I think a couple of kicks at the mark, Chipping whatever. Around. And then it ended up with eighty. Yeah. Um, just yeah, been around. But uh, yeah, Matt, that's the other thing that my opponent had, Matt Roberts. Yeah. One hundred twenty-five just went nuts. Also, Cole Langford with like another hundred twenty-five. Yeah, what, what? Like what is that? Fuck off. Langford. Like, 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 what happens. is that? <laughs> like, the thing is, every time I play him, he's always had Langford, and Langford just goes off. When yeah. I play the guy. Why? Final, so you would have got anyway. like fifty last week. Any other any other names? I, I think some of these are probably they're yeah, definitely two G four P, but it's yes. like more about you could probably get some a little bit undervalued. Um, yeah. Well, probably just. And then, you know, just thinking towards next year as well. Yeah, I'm just thinking about sort of who could be D1, D2 and like structuring your side on that. And, you know, I don't know whether other teams have their trade window open, but you could start trading potentially. Um, I think we know, like I don't actually, I get, people might not know, but Harry Sheasel will be a defender midfielder. Um, yeah. So he will have that, which is great because there was a bit of talk that he might lose defender status. So I yeah. think your P's probably going to be D1. And Flanders as well will, will have defender status. So he's gone from a forward to a defender. Yeah. Now he might not have DPP. I think he needed a bit more mid-time on the weekend. He played forward. Yeah. But to have those two there um, locked in would be is good. Um, the other two that I've been looking at is I – well, I am a Ed Richards and Tom Powell owner. Yeah. One's defender, one's forward. Yeah. Um, I think they're going to be mid only. Yeah, I agree. Um, just from what the stats are saying. Um, so, uh, yeah, just whether – like, you know, Ed Richards, you probably want to keep Tom Powell. I don't know. Like, um, depending on how, how deep your list is. Yeah. What about the um, forwards as well? Like, so there's obviously – like last year we complained about how many forwards yeah. we lost. It's going to be pretty similar next yes. season, isn't it? So the top four this year, Zorko, Heaney, Corbell, Flanders, they're going to be gone. Yeah. So if you remove those, um, you know, on average, D, uh, F1 is Dylan Moore. Yeah. So we know, you know, he's been a consistent 90 guy. Brent Daniels, your man, comes in at F2. Yeah. yeah. And then you Sorry, got- I've, I've already delisted Brent Daniels for the Cosme <laughs> Grand Final. Just a rage to listening. Yeah. Um, Myers, Jeremy Cameron, Danaher, and Mason Wood, if he holds it. That's basically your top six on average oh, going into next year. So on this, like, I've got Brent Daniels. Yeah. I've got Joe Danaher. So I've got two of the top six for next season. Plus, I've got Parker and McRae. Yeah. That's a pretty good forward line. That's good. That is good. <laughs> and how many do you keep? Like 12? 12. I'm yeah. gonna, I think I'm going to bump it back up. Yeah. We, we were 16 forever. <laughs> and then Kays came in and changed it this year. And not, like the, old, the whole idea was to say so someone else would win the grand final. Yeah. And the best teams just got stronger again because mm. we could we had access to like better players earlier on in the draft. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're better off keeping later. Well, so look, we you, you, you drafted Cherry. I like, so mean, I got like 114 <laughs> player on my first and round And he's pick. the second best player this year. <laughs> I know. He, he won the, um, he won the uh, Traders by the award. Like <laughs> crazy. So yeah, that didn't work. Um, yeah. Yeah. You got to go the other way, I think. You got to keep more to like, you know, make sure that the good teams can't top up on players again. Yeah. You know, but anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, so obviously you got those, and then obviously there's guys that okay, who can take the breakout? Who's those guys that can are going to take the next step? Obviously Bailey Smith will be a forward. He's not listed there because he's injured. He, I'm pretty sure he's going the Cats. He's going to be probably F1 if he gets a full midfield role. So you got to factor that in. Um, the other guy that I'm watching, I doubt this will happen, but Horn Francis has been playing forward more yeah. since round 18 that's pretty yeah, that's pretty noticeable um, isn't it pretty noticeable and yeah. he's having an impact he's kicking goals um all australian squad today which yeah. is awesome um but i just feel like he's probably going to miss but 
We'll see what happens in finals. I feel like he's sitting at 32, 33% as a forward. So yep. he just needs a bit more. But we've had this before with like Petrarca. They sit around that range. They just like never get it. Yeah. Um, but one to watch. Yeah, um, 100%. I do, yeah. And then, yeah, like I think there's a few other guys which you can talk about who might break out um, yeah. as a forward. I think, you know, Mateus Philippu. Like, oh, yeah. He's, so he's, gone he's nuts. obviously Kevin Ford's status. Yeah, yep. he'll be a forward. Who I think he'll be a mid forward. Um, and he's gone at 106 the last four games. Yeah. How many VFL games did he play there in the middle as well? So that's the only other thing because he would have played full-time mid yep. in those as well. But like what if he's... What's his percentage for the season? Do you have it off the top of your head, or uh, for I think it was uh, when I was looking twenty seven like, percent, and then he had, but he did probably have a six week stretch. That's injury games, there, isn't it? Uh, sick. Yeah, sick games, yeah, and he there. had a hip. Yeah, he hip, had the hip and then sickness, hip and then sickness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he probably had what a six week stretch where he probably played full time mid. Yeah, but there's still like. He have zero CBAs on the weekend. Yes, Jesus. for 119. I did not realize that. <laughs> okay. He's just rolling up all the time. Yeah, yeah, okay. Awesome. No, well, that's a good sign then as well because he'll probably continue to play that role if that's yeah. the case. Yeah, so as he well. basically played 100 percent forward yeah. on the weekend, yeah. which is awesome. That's sweet. So I'm, I'm pretty confident. Then yeah. yeah, he'll keep. Well, looking at those. the stats from an article I was reading, I think he was at like 47 yeah. percent forward. So he should have plenty. Yeah, and then obviously Bailey Smith coming back. I don't think. He's going to be undervalued though, especially if he gets traded. I think people are going to be like, because he's going to be such a classic hype player. Yeah. I just think maybe just looking at the forwards, like that's your top, you know, you Bailey Smith, Philippou, these are going to be your top guys. Yeah. Add in potentially Parker, McRae, your Caleb Daniels if they get traded. Yeah. And then the other mix there, that's probably like your top. Like obviously I always look at your rankings every year. Yeah. And how you rank players. Yeah. Um, uh, that's just a sort of a, a, a look at the forwards yeah, for, sure. for next year. Well, you kind of mentioned your watch list before. Who else are you watching for, for next season? Yeah, so I think, uh, well, on the weekend, Will Ashcroft had a massive 136, you know, ACL coming back. Um, I just think 2025, you know, it's probably pretty obvious. Like he's yeah. obviously he's Will you Ashcroft. You won't find him in a draft or anything. Exactly. But if you're drafting a new team, yes. is he someone that you'd go pretty early on? I'd, yeah, I'd be going like... Second, third round type yes, thing? Yes, yeah. twenty. Before pick 30, I'd say, yeah, yeah. second or third, if you've got 10 team. Yeah. Um, I think he's going to be like a primo guy. Yeah. Um, and with his brother there as well. So. With his brother. Maybe yeah, that get midfield both is them. never going to go away. Nah. <laughs> it's going to be awesome for so long. So I think he'll be a, he'll break out there. Um, the other one's Will Day, I think. You know, we all, like Will Day, obviously, we know he's a, he's a gun. But he, for me, like... He's a must start in Supercoach. He'll go later than he should in startup keeper league draft yeah. next year. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's the next captain of Hawks. Yes, yeah, um, and yeah. I think he's. Yeah, he's. I think he's got an all Australian season at some point in his career. Yeah, um, so I think jump on him. Like you know, he could go pick fifty or something in a startup. Yeah, I don't know. We actually had a question about you got Connor McDonald on the list here. We actually had a question about him earlier, asking if he'll be a top five forward. Mm. Next year, do you reckon he's someone who could be up there? Hundred percent. Like he, looking at these stats that I've had a look at since around sixteen, he's gone at ninety one point seven. Yeah. So, you know, Dylan Moore went at ninety two this year, and he's going to be F one. So yeah. if Conor McDonald can do that, he can definitely break into that side. So even in your single season drafts, like he's probably someone who won't go. Like you know, Pete, like McRae was going second round and stuff like that yeah. this year. Like. He'll probably go later than that, but will be better than McRae was this year yes. type of thing. So he's a pretty good option. Uh, any other players that you like? Yeah, so these ones might be sort of obvious-ish. Um, uh, Thilt Hawp, I still think, is just going to explode one day. I think even if it's not a ruck, I think um, his last four has been 85 points as a key forward. I think yeah. I think he's going to be a decent forward option. He next could get year. to that Kerno Danaher level yeah. type thing at some stage. Hey, like, you know, what are those? Those guys are 85. Well, and Danaher did. There will so, be some stank on him as a key forward yeah. as well. So like there'll be people that won't touch him that yeah. you probably could get a good deal with or like, you know, get him later in drafts. Exactly. Um, we are talking about the Collingwood midfield depth before. There has been a bit of rumours about Ben Hobbs potentially yeah. going to Pies. And yeah. I think if he does do that, that would be awesome because he will have forward status and he might get more opportunity there. Yeah. Because I just can't see with the... Essendon midfield is just so deep. Yeah. Oh, they could um, put someone like Degoe forward more yeah. and then let Hobbs do his role. Exactly. Thing, so. And I think it'd be a good fit. Um, so he's just on the watch list. And the other one was just Matt Roberts, I think. Fucking Matt Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if you take out um, 
He's averaging 104 since round 18. That's ridiculous. But his season average is 76. <clears throat> yeah. And if you take out the sub games, eh? You take, he had three sub games. You take them all out and he's averaging 94 this year just as a defender. Yeah, that's crazy. And he's average, season average is 76. So it's like, you know, even a startup keeper, you're going to see this 75 or a single season, this 75 average. Yeah. Who could be a 95 average player. Yeah. I think. It's crazy. I got him pick 64 in our top up. Yeah. Dynasty draft. That's awesome. Yeah. Like it was an amazing pick. No one else would have picked him up. So I just let him, I could let him slide. It was amazing. Anyways, uh, we got a few uh, questions came through this week. So we'll get through those and then we'll wrap it up for the season. Um, Dilly Docker is um, asking, who are your, who are you looking at as underpriced projected breakouts in 2024? So Owens, Elijah Hollands and Cowan are the three names he's got. Underpriced. I'm, I don't think we're talking classic, but they're all know. your they're all your boys, really. Yeah. Well, uh, Elijah Holland's. Um, we already made him too good for the podcast this year. That's mm. how good he's been. So I'm not sure how underpriced he'd be. A little bit for classic. I, want, I wonder that, if he's going to hold forward. I think status. he does. Yeah. I think he does. Yeah. Because he has. He's kind of gone in and out as the season's gone over. Um, players that I like that I don't really know. I don't. I have, I'm really bad with prices in classic. Like I don't know until they come out of what yeah. they're actually going to be. But guys that I think like from a draft and keeper league. Uh, perspective that I think uh, could go another level next year is Judd McVie is a big one. Like he got midfield opportunity and I don't see him there, there long-term. Yeah. Um, like if Petrarca stays especially and um, Oliver comes back and now that Vine is re-signed, all that sort of stuff. I don't think, and then you, you're obviously going to play um, uh, Rivers in there as well. Sparrow yeah. will have his bits and pieces. But I do see him as a halfback flanker that can be like their distributor, their kind of main user back there, especially with like Salem doing tagging jobs and stuff like that on players. Yeah. So yep. I think Judd McVie is one I'm looking at just to actually become a good halfback flanker, good user of the footy back there. Basically what we're expecting Rivers to be for so long. He'll end up being that, I think. Um, Cam McKenzie is one I like. I liked him at the start of this year. I think he just kind of got a bit – like he looked really good in the preseason. I think he got a bit overawed, second-year player. Thought he was probably a bit ahead of where he was at. Needed to go mm. back and work on a few things. But I think he's going to be better for that, um, especially if he can keep that midfield role. And I'm high on Oliver Hollands, Ollie Hollands mm. next year. More so, not like as a huge scorer, but as like a, a good M7, like someone you can pick up a bit yeah. later on that's going to be good. He's but put up a few good scores last couple of weeks. His last month has been yeah. amazing. Yeah, he actually got too good for the podcast as well. Yeah. So both Hollands uh, are too good for the podcast. Um, at AFL Breakeven, what's to know? Do I hold onto or delist Alex Sexton? Given I paid way too much for him, I think to list like he's yeah. not. I don't think he's gonna be a forward. The only reason we were considering him is because he was a forward with yeah. the dire options, and yeah. he was playing half back. Yeah, so and that half back role was gone. Yes, and Rioli's going up there. Yeah, so like I think to list. Yeah, no, there's, there's, and he's nothing. old. He's old as well. Yeah, right? there's, <laughs> there's, there's nothing. Actually, I don't know if we should say this. There's been no one listening anyway at the moment. But um, he, Alex um, Sexton's sister. Yeah, abused me on uh, what? on uh, TikTok. <laughs> I don't really when know what it was. Is this recently or like? Yeah, like yeah. maybe like a month ago. So and what you did a video on him or something? We did a video on yeah. him, and we were very complimentary. Like it was actually Aaron Bryan's talking about him, saying like, and it was when um, uh, what's his face got suspended? Um, halfback flanker, the other one, um, the good one. <laughs> I'm having the worst mental uh, breaks tonight. Um, ah, oh, come on. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Powell. Powell. Will Powell. Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry <laughs> no, not, yeah, I couldn't remember it either. Um, Will Powell got suspended for six weeks. And so we're saying, like, it's time for Alex Sexton to stand up and yep. show something. And he's got the opportunity now and we think he'll perform well. And she just, like, wrote something like, what the hell do you guys know? You guys don't even play footy. Like, you're just a bunch of nerds and stuff like that. So I just completely, <laughs> completely ignored it. And then, I, like, a few days a few days after, I noticed I had, like, an inbox, like, because I can't see them because I don't follow her or anything. Yeah. And it just said, like, shut up, you're ugly. <laughs> in, the, in my DMs. <laughs> From Alex Sexton's sister. <laughs> so, anyway. You're actually complimenting him. Yeah, right, we're, like, yeah. we're being nice like, to him. Like, it was so weird, man. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> I was just shocked. Hey, at least you're it. reaching, you're reaching <laughs> yeah, new exactly. people different out, different, different audiences. audiences it's yeah. getting out there. You yeah, know? well, they say any publicity is good publicity. Yeah, exactly. so. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, yeah, delicious Alex Sexton. Uh, Sammy Cullen, uh, for uh, thoughts on Matt Roberts, can he become a premium defender? 100%. Yeah, yep. I think we just talked yep. about that. 100%. So, um, and then Quan Direction, uh, if you could draft again this year, who would be your first pick for a rookie player outside of McKercher based on their future potential? Who do you think? Oh, geez. Uh, well, you know, you got to put Harley Reid in that conversation. Yeah. Um, would you I pick think... him before any other, like apart from McKercher? 
Um, what have you reconsidered? No, I wouldn't pick him before McKercher. I think McKercher's one. No, sorry, uh, after McKercher. Because that was the draft order. McKercher yes. one, Reed probably two. Yeah. Would that still be the same for you? I think so. And then obviously, you know, you got the other two guys, Sanders and uh, Wilson. I think I'd still have Reed two. Only because Sanders, oh, I don't know, it's hard, isn't it? Like yeah. Sanders is in and out of the side, but he's got so much potential. And like, like you're right, Liber and uh, Bond are getting old. So yeah. Sanders is going gonna, is gonna, gonna to be a gun. Yeah. And I think, um, and Trelaw's getting old too. Like yeah. They're all getting old. So I think Sanders, like it's just Bevo factor. It's like, Bevo, yeah. yeah. And I think eventually he does... Become like I think he's got more tools to be a fantasy scorer than someone like Reed does. Yeah. Um Reed's gonna be that explosive Dusty Martin type yeah. and he'll be a good ninety average kind of guy. Maybe probably a little bit better because I think he'll spend more time in the midfield than he does up forward. Yeah. Um than Martin does. But like I still think Sanders is, could be like a one ten guy. Yes, so, I agree. Yeah. I think he's got the numbers. Like a medalist yeah. as well. The other one I like is Darcy Wilson. Yeah. Like as a silky type. I think he could go inside as well just because he's a good user of the footy too. Put um, some decent scores. Yeah. I always go by like their first year. If they can score a ton in their first year, yeah. it's always a really good yeah, indicator. Um, indicator. And he scored two. I yeah. think, I'm not sure if Sanders has, but all those, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's a, reason why I put, there's a reason. There's exactly. a reason why I put tons in the breakout tracker, like yeah. in the data, like yeah. to see how many tons they've scored in their yeah. first 100 games type thing. Yeah. Because um, it, it is an important factor, I think, as well. I think, you know, if he's a, yeah. I, I, I don't think you can go wrong with those, any of those four, really, like yeah. in that order. That's just, yeah. yeah. No, you, you're right. And then probably Windsor as well is probably another one that's yeah. up there as well. But I, yeah. I wonder if Windsor, yeah, if Melbourne's midfield, we'll see what happens. But hopefully there's a bit of opportunity in the mid, Melbourne midfield yep. maybe. But you're Reid, I'm Sanders. Yeah. And that's how it probably goes. Anyways, uh, that's a wrap for the 2024 season. Jordy, you've probably been the most consistent guest this year, I think. And you're oh. probably the guy who... um. Steps in when other people can't, you know, bail and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, like, hey, I've can't uh, do a last minute and stuff like that. So I've, thanks heaps for helping out this year. No worries, I really enjoyed it, and it's been good to talk footy and also other things like we've been to concerts. Yeah, and we've done heaps we've of been shit in mosh year. pits and you know, <laughs> like we've done heaps of stuff. Yeah. So come you come to gigs. gigs as well, which yeah. I really appreciate. No, and no worries, um, yeah, I love talking footy, and uh, hopefully see you doing super coach again next yeah, year yeah thanks for your cancel uh <laughs> this year like we both finished in the top one percent yeah we you did. were probably f- much further in the higher end of the oh, top one percent you started so hot as well <laughs> i know yeah. I, I, i've learned so many lessons though like i yeah. fucked up so many trades like there's probably three trades i could have had back yeah like no worries that would have not have affected like where i was ranked earlier yeah and would have just powered me home at the end of the season so i think yeah yeah and that's it you've sort of seen how holding yeah. trades is actually like really important and i think a lot of people get really trigger hack like happy and they yeah. and they you know they trade in one out and one out so we'll just hold it yeah, just yeah. hold it for a bit so yeah. um and yeah. uh, keep the excited things the Hawthorns will be back better bigger and better next year i'm sure you got the forward um, line yeah, you got the forward line, got the got the X Man in the ruck, the best and ruck in the game. Your mids are elite as well. Yeah, well they're okay. I've got five good, four good mids. Yeah, so they're guys, just, like it's not too bad. Ceilings. Yeah, yeah. So could get there. Need to find some defenders, but I feel like they're easy to come by. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, yeah. And thanks to all the other guys who were on the podcast uh, this year as well. I, I listed all them on. Uh, twitter today but some of them will be listening i'm sure and thank you to all the, those guys who have helped me out this year uh, thank you to everyone who's listened shared liked whatever um all that sort of stuff really helps um just to get the exposure out there and gets it in people's algorithms and stuff like that but probably the biggest one is thank you to all the members that uh signed up this year um you guys knew the story basically had to make it make a decision between going back to work full time and doing the podcast and chose the podcast and it looks like i'm gonna have to dive further into that next year because i've got a choice between full time or no work essentially <laughs> so mm-hmm. we'll have to cross that bridge when it comes to it but things are looking good because the members have stepped up and supported uh this year so um yeah if you do want to support the podcast there'll be a link in the description below have all the off-season content i'm probably going to have like two or three new resources on the website for next year that are going to help out and mainly stuff that people have been crying out for yeah awesome. um so yeah just all taking feedback and trying to help people with a few other things but if you're not a member you'll miss out on those so make sure you are signed up so you get access and yeah that's pretty much it anything else you want to add any gigs coming up that people in adelaide should come i'm doing see? i'm doing the royal show oh, so that's right yeah yeah so that'll be this uh, this saturday yeah it yeah. comes up so in the goiter stage it's called icons of music it's a dance and music show together so yeah. it should be pretty fun something different from the pubs i'll so. be there i'll be there on the friday yeah come have a look yeah keen and, uh, that'll be Sounds the good. day after the port oh, yeah, it will be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's gonna <laughs> be a big day but anyway yeah. depending on how we go uh but yeah once again thanks heaps for listening this season and We'll talk to you sometime throughout the off-season. Take it easy, people. See ya.